Hello, Average Engineers. It's been a while since I had a video, so I thought I'd talk about a recent article I wrote called Replacing Databricks Jobs Using Delta with Polar. So what I'm going to talk about today is how I have in production, how you could too, replace some Databricks Spark jobs with Polars. And I'm going to assume you know what Polars is. It's a new data frame tool built in Rust that a lot of people are using, a lot of hype around it. So they call it the Pandas Killer, which it is. And yeah, I'm going to talk about my experience of trying to save money and reduce complexity by taking certain Spark jobs running on Databricks and using Polars instead. Now this isn't one of those things where I'm saying you can replace everything you do in Databricks or Spark with Polars because that certainly is not true. Every tool has its place and every place has a tool. And I'm not against using Databricks. And there's just certain instances though, right, where you can swap out tools and have cost savings. And I think it's always good to have multiple tools in your belt. And this is definitely a case where Polars can replace some Databricks jobs. And another thing I want to talk about is that Polars is a great tool built in Rust. It can process larger than memory data sets, what makes it a perfect tool to actually put in production. I know a lot of people talk about tools and things like that, but I like actually using tools that you can use in production, and Polars is actually a tool I have put in production, and I have actually replaced Databricks Spark jobs with Polars. One thing we have to think about when we're picking tools, especially like Polars or other new things, is is it a reliable enough for production, and is, it, you know, is anyone else, or are other people using it in production, is there other people doing this? Is it capable of it truly? Can I ease my way into this? Is it going to break things? How does it fit into the current process? And can I save money or reduce complexity? Those are very important topics, and I think Polars does all those. So this picture I'm showing you right now is basically what we're going to do. We're going to take a Delta Lake table stored in Unity Catalog up maybe, say, an S3 in this case, like with the S3 back end. And we're going to try to replace PySpark and the Databricks processing, which can be expensive sometimes, with simply polars running inside an Airflow worker. And this is a very common setup. A lot of people use Apache Airflow in production, whether it's managed or self-hosted. And a lot of people are using Databricks and PySpark, and a lot of people are using Delta Lake. So the question is, can we take certain Databricks jobs and replace them with polars? Again, I would only recommend this, and I only did this with what I would call smallerish table data sets inside Databricks and Delta Lake. Of course, yes, polars can process larger than memory data sets, quite large. But I'm talking, we're not talking tables that are hundreds of terabytes or even hundreds of gigabytes. I'm talking smaller tables that are in the tens of gigabytes. So in my case, I was actually using at work, already using Airflow as our orchestrator, and we were using Airflow to call into Databricks and run jobs and that could be expensive we had a bunch of smaller jobs what i call smaller data sets that we were pulling out these data sets doing a little messing with them and then kicking off other things doing things with those results and they weren't necessarily not really analytical in nature that makes sense we weren't crunching hundreds of gigabytes of data or terabytes of data or just you know maybe 10 gigabytes of or less of data and i thought hey you know, that costs money to run that stuff on Databricks. It's really the only reason we're running it on Databricks is because we want a uniform tool, which is a good choice. But it's like, hey, we're already running Airflow, we're already running these Airflow workers, are already costing us money. How about if we take these small jobs that are running on Databricks and just move them over to already running compute on Airflow that we have? And again, you have to think about the ease of setup. Unlike Spark, setting up Polars is easy. All you have to do is pip install. So it's really easy to get installed inside Airflow or anywhere else. And again, remember that a lot of people use Spark and they use Spark SQL. And remember that Polars has a SQL context, so it's really not that much of a change as well as Polars has a data frame API similar to PySpark, not exactly the same, but that's one of the things we have to pay attention to is that the transition between these two tools is really non-existent. And this was actually really easy. I'm gonna actually show you some of the code we use to do this. This function I'm showing you is called Delta Reader and it really takes a path of a Delta table in S3, so an S3 location of a delta table, and it basically reads that delta table with polars. It's super simple. There's no black magic here. Very simple. I'm sorry if you thought there was going to be some black magic, but that's it. That's all the function looks like to read a delta table in Databricks. That's a Unity catalog that's stored in an S3 location that I know the location of. That's it. That's just, you know, 10, 15 lines of code. And all of a sudden, I've got a data frame back that's in polars from that delta table that's living inside Databricks Unity Catalog, super easy. 
What are the benefits of this? It's cheaper to run Polars on a pre-existing compute like Airflow than it is to run on Databricks. We're going to save the money on the bottom line, and it's faster than running PySpark in 99% of the use cases for these small data sets. Spark shines at big data, hundreds of terabytes, and that's not the case here. We're talking about small data sets. Polars can process it using its Rust backend way faster. This also required no major infrastructure changes. It was a simple pip install to pre-existing infrastructure. I didn't have to do some crazy thing to use Polars, which makes it a great option. And again, it's similar technology to PySpark. We're talking pool and data frame API that's very similar. So it's not like anyone has to learn something crazy. And I'm guessing like us, there's a lot of data teams that have something similar where they have a bunch of data being processed in Databricks because it needs to be. It's data at scale, but then they probably have a subset of jobs that are smaller on that small side, but they're running on Databricks just to make their life easy, but they are spending money to do that when they necessarily don't have to do that. With Polars, you gain the flexibility and ability to do data processing on Delta Lake. Yes, even Unity Catalog Delta Lake tables outside of Spark and Databricks. Believe it or not, this will save you time and money to the bottom line. When you And you're introducing flexibility into your stack. You're adding another tool that's very similar, and this just widens the horizons of things you can do. I'm going to show you a couple other side notes here. This is an example of what actually some of the table locations look like for Unity Catalog Table in S3. You can get those if you know where to look for them. You can pull them or get them from a UI or pull them programmatically of like, hey, I have this Delta, label, Delta table called X and it's living in S3 somewhere as a backend in Unity Catalog. You can get that location and that's kind of what I use to pass into Polars to read that location of that Delta table. Again, here's a little example of a little bit of some code that we're using. So remember I showed you that function before we were just reading that static S3 location of that Delta table in Unity Catalog. Here is a little bit of code that we're using to iterate the results of that data frame. Super simple to see a simple for loop where we're iterating the rows and in our case we we're actually pulling some uh, information from those rows and we're actually using that information to trigger downstream pipelines. You can see that happening here. Of course this could be anything but you know, in the past, we were having to run this on Databricks, and it's, you know, just costly, and there's no need to do that. We had Airflow workers that could easily handle this, and adding Polars to the stack was just like a no-brainer. And I th think, honestly, the sky's the limit here. I would suspect there's some serious money that could be saved in certain use cases that don't require massive amounts of data. In my experience, only a handful of folks are actually using Databricks for something like they need it for for big data. Yes, I work with tables that are hundreds of terabytes. There's no way Polars is going to work there. We have to have Spark. But honestly, there's always a subset of jobs that don't really need that. I still think Databricks is the platform to beat all platforms, but I think mixing in things like Polars, you can absolutely replace some Databricks jobs and actually save money on the bottom line. So I am using Polars in production, and I'm wondering why you're not. Let me know in the comments, have you tried this yet?